It, it, this was the problem, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. I haven't spilled a drop since, since I, I've been doing this. Yeah. It's quicker. This is what people don't think of when they put a heavy engine in and then they add weight to the tail to make it balance out. We got Spike. Hey. Hey. Hey, Spike. How you doing? Hey. Hey. Yeah, it's weird for me to have a plane up here. I mean, usually I'm, I just... I've never seen a plane up here. No, that's because I got a hangar. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess this is a little better, safer spot, huh? Is that's, that... Yeah. That's the uh, sheet of aluminum I lay down in the summer. So when I come up my ramp there, yeah, I lock up one brake and I pivot on that aluminum. So I'm not grinding my tire oh, into the asphalt. That's a really good idea. Yeah. Is it hard to taxi up here or no? Not with that Prince prop. It just goes. It idles up just about. Yeah. That's the thing. And when I put a whirlwind on, yeah, you know, just to start talking props, yeah, it was like it needed quite a bit of throttle. Where's... Now how that translates to thrust in the air is a separate issue for sure because static thrust really don't mean much yeah you know i mean it does and it does because it all comes down to what happens once you once start you start moving getting air over the uh exactly prop. yeah it is an interesting uh test though to see what it can pull at static. It, 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 it's but you're it's right it's the most convenient test let's it, put it that way yeah exactly. you know it's uh it gives you some place to start i guess but does it really but, matter yeah, because it. I mean that it, I it guess does. It, it does just for takeoff. I, I guess that maybe initial, initial. Yeah, because that's what I like about oops. the Prince. It, it just kicks butt right from the start. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. We are. Uh, if you remember, Tom had an issue with his uh, Rotex 912. He put a Edge Performance fuel injection system on it, took the carbs off. The whole reason he did that is because he was having an issue when he'd hit 5,000 RPMs, the whole airplane would just fall on his face. That wasn't supposed to happen, right? Right, that's... And when he put the Edge Performance on, it was doing the exact same thing. So it wasn't the carbs. And you guys submitted a lot of comments and suggestions, and I'm... The, I'm very curious, was any of those comments right? Valve floating. Valve floating. Valve floating was so, the term I, I learned. I never heard that term before. And Here's that why. is what ha- is basically... Here's the camshaft. Oh, you have the camshaft. Okay. Okay. So what are we looking at here? See that there? Oh, dang. Feel that. Oh. Wow. And this was the cylinder, corresponds to the cylinder that had issues, okay? Okay. It had a, uh, it, it had a couple of different things, low compression. It, it, this was the problem, I'm sure. Well, I know oh, now, because yeah. I, mean, I flew okay. another hour this morning. And then the other thing is, see, oh, see, man. see all that? They're all pitted. Yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be all like, all super, super smooth, so. I'll be dang. I guess we got a bad one here. Now, why would this happen? Don't know. What, Don't know. What about uh, Mike? Did he? 265 make? hours on it is all. That's not. That's not much. That's not. Yeah, much. That's, that's nothing. So I got another one, and sent it direct to Mike. Had to hell send it to Mike actually, and then when Mike called me, he says, "Hey, he says I noticed this. This is in the Rotax camshaft." I go, "No, no, it's another one I got from Hal." This is a high performance cam and it does have performance benefits in the mid range torque. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And I like it. And after, after talking to Hal, we both trust Hal, right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, he, it blew his mind. Now, when we get done, I'm going to mail this to him. Yeah. Okay, uh, you know, or I might even just fly down there. What the hell? Yeah, I, yeah. I need to get to Maritime anyway. And, for uh, sure. And maybe I'll take a hammer and beat it up first a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Some mess with his head. Hey, yeah. Wait, what did you send me? Yeah, yeah. But uh, then, so that could be a used. No, no, it was brand new. That was brand new. Yeah, yeah, no. Hal gets them brand new there, and after he has them, I'm not sure. So it's not a Rotax part? No. All right, I had to stop the video and just explain that the camshaft actually was a stock Rotax camshaft. I ended up calling Hal Stockman to ask him about a question 
with my engine that I'm dealing with. And I talked to him about Tom's situation. Yeah, it still has a step on the back, yeah. So that means it wasn't ground down. And it wasn't ground down, yeah. So it was a it was original Rotex cam. Yeah, it was an original Rotex cam. Okay. Tom actually did send that camshaft to Hal and Hal looked at it and it sure enough was a stock camshaft. Now Hal does sell a modified uh, camshaft that he puts in his engines in the Rotax 912 and how he does that is he gets a stock camshaft, sends it to a company and they uh, grind it down and make it into this uh, modified camshaft which, which adds five horsepower, I believe. Anyways, uh, there was some confusion with Hal and Tom and uh, Tom thought it was the uh, modified camshaft, but it actually was a stock camshaft. So interesting. And then also it's technically not valve floating why it would stutter out at 5,000 RPM. No, it just wasn't getting enough lift to let enough air in. Uh, okay. So valve floating, what is valve floating then? Valve floating is when you got too much RPM and the lifter pumps up and holds the valve open. Gotcha. The good thing is, I guess in a way, looking back, is now I know the symptoms and I know how many hours it took. And let's just say if the same thing happens 200 and some hours from now, you know that's I'll be right on that like stinking shit. Yeah, exactly. But uh, according to Hal, it's not going to happen. He said, I got a lot of them out, haven't had any problems. Okay, so okay, okay. I'm chalking it up. Maybe it missed the tempering process. Don't know about the pity. I, you know, I'm trusting Hal. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So just to update, Tom had to take the engine completely off and he shipped it to Mike, completely tore it down and put that new camshaft in. The aftermarket, another aftermarket, another cam aftermarket high performance. camshaft. Got it running good again. So, but well, that fixed it. Um, so somebody was, there's a few comments that they, they yeah, guessed it. Yeah. Thank you guys for uh, posting those comments. It, it is nice. It's nice because they do oh, yeah. think about. More ideas are better. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, you bet. That's yeah. what's really cool about the whole YouTube thing. All right. So now today we still got to tune this to the Edge Performance fuel injection. So I'm back up here. We're going to get the computer out. Going to finish it. And, it and we're going to finish the tune. You ever seen the way I feel? No. That's how I do it. You always have really cool little... Yeah, watch out for the computer. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's not step on that. <laughs> <I'd> up everything. <laughs> this is how I re refuel quite often at home and also on the road, so to speak. If I come back with uh, gas from a gas station, because I haven't burned out of gas, a drop of a of gas in 15, 16 years. Yeah. I get car gas or else I'm out of gas. <laughs> <laughs> I can use any container, doesn't have to be these bush bags, can be an open bucket of gasoline if that's all I can get, but I carry two of these always. Plus I got a nine gallon uh, marine fuel bladder also I carry. So that gives me 10 and nine, about 19, 18 gallons right in there. I can go get and come back with per trip. Gotcha. And with that's the good. amount of fuel that burns, that gets me down the road quite a ways, yeah. all right? But uh, I've got a transfer pump permanently mounted on the floorboards. Okay. It's teed, it, teed into the bottom of my header tank. There's but, your header tank right yeah, there. But first it goes up under the, uh, to a valve under my seat. So while I'm flying, I can reach down, open this valve up. And now when the pump kicks on, whatever's connected to this dipstick. Okay. Finger strainer on it. Yeah. Uh, when the pump kicks on, it's Going boom right into the right uh, into the yeah. header tank right into the header tank Get into the T below the header tank and I don't care if it goes into the header tank into the engine doesn't matter motor keeps running yeah the same sure. yeah so wait you do this while you're flying oh yeah yeah that way you, oh, well man. not not now with the bush bags this is all done on the ground like right now okay right? but the uh, marine bladder tank I have yeah I could do I do that while I'm flying oh nice and, and it's it's like these bush bags it'll puff up when it's full yep take up a lot of room and then as it empties it ends up not just taking up no room yeah so oh. i can reach behind me and i can kind of feel it and feel okay it's you know it's it's running low and, and then i'll 
I'll stop it. I can. How quick will that empty that bag? Uh, four or five minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it, it's reasonable. It's way better than climbing up on the I table. haven't spilled a drop since, <laughs> since I, I've been doing this. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I know they make valves. I've seen guys, they lay the bags up on top of the wing oh, and they sucks. open up the valve. Screw that. It sucks. Yeah, yeah. And the other, here's the best thing about it. Yeah. Is while I'm sitting here, in fact, here, I can't put much in because I'm almost full. Okay. Okay. While I'm sitting here, I can look at my sight gauge and they both fill up e equally. If I'm park level. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Unlike the way they drain, where it's, one, it's, one tank usually drains faster than the other. Doesn't yeah. matter. Uh, but when you fill, they both fill evenly. So I just look, and when I see it, you know, getting up there, I can stop. Or if I really want to max out my fuel consumption, I'll keep going till it looks like it's totally full. I'll keep going, and then I'll rock the wings a bit till I get a little dribble out of my uh, overflow vents. Okay. Overflow vents. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't hurt anything. It falls through the airplane. Yep. And then I know I'm totally maxed out. I'm just going to get other stuff Yeah. So, oh, yeah, that, that's... It's, it's a handy, handy setup. I had a similar deal on my other S7. Yeah, that's actually. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do something like that with mine. And and this valve here, this quick disconnect, seals on both ends. Okay. Oh, perfect. Yeah. I don't know how it's convenient. Hard it is climbing up on a wing. Oh, I hit it. Yeah. On the tire, balancing five <laughs> five gallons of fuel. Yeah. And trying not to spill any on your Lex. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that was quick. Get this. Yeah. yeah. Now, if only you could fit this in the plane. All right, let's get it set up. Customers, I do a lot of crane work for. They needed yeah. to have the truck dri driver deliver the units directly to my crane yard. Yeah. They came with these packing crates. So, th this is what I'm saying. It's part of my deal. Like, yeah. I unload them with the crane. Yeah. I got to get rid of the packing crates. Yeah. I can haul them to the dump. I can haul them up there, you know? Yeah, exactly. And you can burn it. So <laughs> it is free heat. <laughs> it's absolutely. No, I get paid is what I'm telling you. Yeah, well, actually, that's true. It's better than free. It's better than free. The video of uh, Tom's heating system, there was numerous comments uh, saying how he, there's, yeah, he's paying for wood and he hasn't, because the whole thing was he hasn't had a heating bill for 40 years. And uh, yeah, so he actually got paid to take that wood away. And I'm thinking, you know, if I got that uh, EPROP, first thing I'd do, in fact, I'd, when we take this off and maybe if I use, try yours, yeah, you'll, yeah. we'll weigh this whole, everything I'm taking everything off. Because I notice when they weigh it, they're, they're counting the bolts and everything. Everything. That's what yeah. is important. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, and the spinner is built in. You can get yeah. whatever length yeah. you want. Yeah. So, now, if I've never figured out whether this really hurts me or not. I mean, it looks like hell, but I don't care because I can't see it. Well, they can make a spinner to fit that. Oh, oh yeah, like Joel's. T yeah. uh, 12 inch is what it is. Yeah. 12 inch spinner. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking if I went with this ground adjustable one. Yep. Weighs how much? 75? Like Five pounds, 14 ounces. And, and if all lot. this put together weighs maybe nine. 12, pound, 12 and a half pounds. Boy, I've, if I could lose five pounds off the forward of the uh, propeller flange there, the, that's huge. That's huge. Yeah. And it's not only the weight there, it's the weight out here that it's trying to turn. Yep. And it's also the weight. It's quicker. This is what people don't think of when they put a heavy engine in, in and then they add weight to the tail to make it balance out. Yeah. Okay. But now every time you're cranking and banking, you have you're swinging weight. more weight around exactly. laterally, I guess that would be. Yep. True. So, no. Yeah, lighter is always better. We'll, we'll have you fly up and we'll do, I'll let you put my EPROP on. Yeah. And we'll do we'll do a pull test too. I don't know. I yeah. This uh, one may pull more static. I, yeah, I, I wouldn't know. be surprised if it did, actually. Yeah. Before to go the same speed, he had to be a higher RPM. Okay. And it was just so loud. And now it's quieter and he's going, because he, he's lower RPM. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, huh. so that's what he really yeah. likes about it. And he says it's unbelievable smooth. Yeah, that's yeah. what's, and more it, than anything, that's what's getting me. That's and the weight. Yeah. yeah, and he said shutting down is amazing because it... You don't get that. You don't get the bam. Yeah. Shoot. I could call it Emmett. Emmett might know. Let you know when we get that cable and do this again. Like Tom said, it's getting a little hot and we just gotta get more fuel. And he has to do that with a cable, 
we don't have the cable and so we got to do this all again okay yeah and like the uh, CHDs and the EGTs are running or the uh, oil and water are are good they're running nice they're, and cool it's just fine. the EGTs themselves that are hot it doesn't, it doesn't make sense right now. We really want to do it with the Prince after he gets through tuning it. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, guys. So we're going to do that test in another video. Tom's going <laughs> to probably fly to my place and put the E-Prop on. We're going to tune his engine and see what kind of uh, static thrust he gets with one or the other. And he'll fly both props and we'll get his take on the E-Prop. So... Hope you guys liked the video. Hit the like, hit the subscribe. We'll see you on the next video. Bye.